Hey there, this video is just about me talking about the importance of checking clearances on cylinder heads. A uh, little story, back in probably 97 or 98, I think it was 98 because I quit racing in 97 and was crew chiefing for somebody else in 98, or the last half of 97 into 98, and uh, had a guy at the racetrack, uh, was road racing, road racing Buells back in NASB days and Buell race series. And uh, met a guy up there. I think we were at Pocono. I'm pretty sure it was Pocono. And our bike was demonstrably faster than his. And the racer I was crew chiefing with had been talking to the guy and the guy had come over to our pits and we were talking and the guy wanted to know about why our bike was different. Of course, I'm not going to tell him everything, but tell him it was mostly in the cylinder heads. So guy was real interested in getting a set of heads done. Uh, so met with him and his tuner slash mechanic whatever which that guy had a real attitude problem for him even talking to us i guess you know like a lot of tuners he's got a big head thought he knew everything so i got uh got the particulars about what was actually done to his bike as far as what cams uh what heads they were using what carburetor, just everything, exhaust, ignition system, valve springs, whether he'd done a push rod conversion to adjustable push rods or what. And wrote it all down in my little notebook and gave him a price and told him that I'd just, I'd just do a set of heads and we'd swap. Uh, so I had pl plenty of head casting, so we'd just swap heads out. You know, I'd do his heads, and he could come pick them up, or I could ship them to him when he was ready, or when I was done with them. So, because I'd written everything down, I already had an idea, you know, I'm doing titanium valves with uh, copper beryllium valve seats that I was making in-house, and comp cams valve springs, which is at that point was that was the standard for me was comp cam. I'd already tried everybody else, had really good success with comp springs. So I do the heads, you know, knock the, knock the guides out of the heads I got and do the do the port work, run them on the Superflow flow bench SF ten twenty computerized flow bench, and finish them up with a. Uh, 30 on the 30 valve seat, the 30 100 valve seat, seat and guide machine, and set the springs up. Got everything written down, you know, valve to valve clearance, uh, mocked the pistons up in another motor, and got everything done. Everything's clear, doesn't hit anywhere, everything's good. So the guy actually comes down because he, he's in, we were in Maryland at the time. So he comes down and from, I think he was from either Pennsylvania or New Jersey, somewhere around Philly, I think. So comes down, gets the heads. And he's, you know, they, 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 they look like cylinder heads. You know, they're nice. I think I coated them too. I did a ceramic, ceramic coating in the, on the heads of the valves and on the combustion chambers. And, did a ceramic coating inside the exhaust ports and molly coating on the pistons, piston skirts and ceramic coating on the tops of the pistons. So almost exact copy of our heads or an exact copy of the heads I was using. So anyway, he gets the heads. Take I guess he took them to, I don't know what shop there he was using or that this tuner quote tuner was tuning out of or what dealership or whatever but you know a guy calls me up during the next week 
I think it was during the next week, you know, it's 20, 20 something years ago, 28, 27, 28 years ago. And, uh, he's, his first, first words, out, first words out of his mouth, these heads ain't going to fucking work. I'm like, whoa, 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 buddy. Why ain't they going to work? He's like, well, the valves are hitting each other. I already know that there ain't no way the valves are hitting each other. I've already checked them. Had over 100,000 clearance between the valves. And then he's like, the, the springs are coil binding. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You guys said you were using a 600 lift cam. I know what the springs were set to. And I'd sent him a copy of my spec sheet for those heads. And the cylinders and pistons that went with it. So everything's cool with that thing. So, I, you know, I talked to the guy and he's like, well, they're just, nothing's lining up. And I'm like, well, what, kind of, what, what kind of valve lift do you have? He's like, 650. I was like, well, now at the racetrack, you guys told me you're running 600 lift cams. Well, we, I put different cams in there. Like, well, you know what? That's not my problem. You put different cams in there and the heads are set up for 600 lift and you put 650s in there. It's a totally different setup. So anyway, the owner of the bike calls me and he, he's apologizing. And I was like, man, you don't need to apologize. You know, you're not the one that, you're not the dumbass that put 650 lift cams in there when the heads are set up for 600. So I told, you, I told him, you're going to have to put them 600 lift cams back in there, you know, sell your tuner or whatever, or to, you know, find a different tuner, find somebody that actually knows what they're doing instead of some guy that's pretending he knows what he's doing because he's going to break shit in that motor. And, you know, you don't, you don't need that happening on the racetrack, man. You, you know, you're not, you're not drag racing. You're not, you're, you're road racing. It's a big difference. So long story short, they put 600 lift cams back in there. And guy was just pleased as punch after that. It actually started making some power. And I don't remember the exact numbers, but it was probably 105, 108. It's a rear wheel somewhere in there. That would last more than a couple of laps. But anyway, that's the importance of checking cylinder heads right there. You know, know what lift you're using. Check all your clearances. Valve to valve, valve to piston, cylinder wall clearances, uh, valve to guide clearances, your uh, spring pressures, on Evo stuff with bigger springs, make sure your springs aren't hitting uh, rocker boxes or that your uh, rocker arms aren't hitting uh, valve collars, which can be a problem on some of that stuff because you'll have some of them aftermarket rocker arms. They're not cut out enough on the edge here. So they'll uh, the rocker arm will actually hit the top retainer. So you need to check all those. And if you can, I'd recommend uh, hydro solids, like gems or s and or whoever. Now, you, you don't have to buy their lifters because them damn lifters have gotten expensive. You can get just the drop-in uh, spacers to convert lifters you already have, like soft, stock lifters and the hydro solids. It's just a little spacer. It looks like a little hardened washer that goes up under the goes up under the uh, piston and the lifter. And with those, you'll have to use uh, adjustable push rods. Something decent, not them spindly quick install push rods, but, uh, you know, a substantial push rod that has a full-size adjuster on it, not that little quarter-inch thing. It's bendy all over the place. Uh, I used to use Axtell push rods because they were, they were pretty stout. But 
uh, probably S and S push rods would be okay. Not the quick install, the regular. Used to use crane a long time ago. Those were those were okay. They were a little little bendy. Uh, used uh, Rivera taper light push rods, which you know weren't weren't bad. Had a little clearance where the had a little clearance issue to the adjustable to the collapsible push rod tubes. So you'd end up having to cut about a half inch off the bottom of the inner push rod tube to clear the push rods. But other than that, they were they were pretty strong. Uh, just, you know, check your clearances. And I think that's it for this one. I should have a carburetor one coming up here shortly. And some other stuff. Probably the oil, oil getting ready to reinstall the oil tank. And bleed the bleed the pump. Make sure we're gonna have good oil pressure when we start this thing up. Uh, but that's it. You know, if you like my content, please like, share, subscribe, comment, share, whatever. Appreciate it. Appreciate anybody watching. If you can subscribe, go ahead and subscribe, or throw me a like, or uh, you know, whatever. Appreciate it. Thank you.